Hello learners, welcome to NIOS studio. I am Dr. Sushma Goyal. Today I am going to talk about maintenance of premises. Maintenance of premises is very important as all of us know and we are using the term facilities management which is a professional term used by professionals for maintenance of premises. Facility management is a holistic view for maintenance of premises professionally and it enhances asset value of the property. What are the benefits of maintenance? If we maintain premises, it is good for its protection, repair and preservation of interior as well as exterior surfaces as if they were new. Maintenance also enables clean, comfortable and attractive as well as safe environment. Maintenance provides solutions for operating functions of buildings effectively and efficiently. As all of us know that there are various kinds of buildings which need to be maintained. We need to maintain residential buildings, small office, large office, commercial buildings, hospitals, retail malls, hotels and theatres. Now these are only some of the buildings which we are, I am talking about, but there are many more buildings which we need to maintain. Let us look at what are the various facilities in these buildings which need to be maintained. We need to maintain the walls and ceilings, floors, metals and its alloys and non-metal surfaces we find for the interior walls, ceilings and floors, various metals and alloys are used as well as non-metal surfaces. Alloy is any material where we mix metal with some other metal, then it is known as an alloy. Uh, then we also have various other services and facilities like water facilities, plumbing systems, lighting systems, electrical and electronic fittings and fixtures as well as HVAC equipment. HVAC is heating, ventilation and air conditioning, which is one of the main component of any building. We will begin with cleaning and care of walls and ceilings. We find walls are not only plain walls, but they also occupy various other things. In the, inside the wall, we have wall partitions, we have doors, we have wall claddings, we have columns, we have wall screens, we have ceiling surfaces and we also have windows and window frames. Now each one of these elements of the wall, they use different kind of material. So therefore, when we are cleaning the uh, walls and ceilings, we have to look at what are the materials, what kind of uh, uh, surfaces are there and then sim accordingly we have to maintain them. Now let us just look at what are the types of materials which are used for clean uh, for walls, floors and ceilings. We have to know about these materials because unless we know about these materials we will not be able to select the right method for cleaning them. For metals we have iron and its alloys. We have aluminium and its alloys, copper and its alloys and we also have precious metals. We also use lot of non-metals actually for walls, floors and ceilings we will find there are lot of non-metal materials which are used uh, primarily and these are natural products which are stone, wood, leather and lime. Also materials obtained from firing and burning like we have ceramics, we have glass, we have bricks, we have cement and also we have lot of man-made high polymers. Now polymers are plastics which are used immensely in walls, ceilings and floors. Uh, most of the times we find walls are painted. Now painted walls can be uh, whitewashed, could be distempered or there could be acrylic and emulsion paints which are used for wall surfaces. Uh, for uh, kitchens as well as for bathrooms and toilets, we generally use wall tiles. 
There are also wallpapers used for uh, generally for drawing room, for bedrooms, so that you know the appearance of the uh, uh, walls could be changed time to time. And we also have wooden panels and generally wooden paneling is used in theatres and uh, places where soundproofing is required. Now let us see what is the method for maintenance of walls. How do we maintain the walls? So generally we remove cobwebs every day using a broom. So uh, uh, we can also dust well with a brush or a soft cloth. We can fill up the cracks and crevices. Now generally uh, we find you know when there are some kind of cracks etc. If we do not fill them up then there are ants and mosquitoes and other kind of uh, elements which find place so uh, to harbour. So we have to remove uh, the cracks and crevices. We also have must paint the walls intermittently and generally a suitable time period, period for painting the walls is once in a year or for commercial buildings. But if it is a household then maybe once in two years or three years is also suitable. So depending on the use of the building we paint the walls. Now when we talk about care and uh, of painted wall surfaces, we have to take care of some kind of uh, precautions. So paint can be destroyed if we rub it too hard or uh, we use strong cleaning agents or we use abrasive powders. And poor quality paints if we are using then they also get flaked and washed away easily. So we have to ensure that good quality paints are used so that they can be cleaned properly. Now uh, cleaning of painted walls, how do we do that? We can clean the painted wall that is the advantage that we can use a mild detergent uh, or sometimes a soap jelly using a soft cloth. Now soft, what is a soft cloth? It could be a cotton dhoti kind of a material or it could be uh, the uh, polishing cloth which can also be used which can be just dipped in the detergent and rubbed onto the surface. So we have to rinse it with water and again uh, squeeze it nicely and then apply it on a small area every time because if we apply it on larger area then it may actually uh, leave some marks because it will dry up and the soap will dry and it will not be possible to remove the marks. Uh, we can also rinse and dry using a sponge to prevent scratching. Now uh, after having talked about walls and ceilings, let us now talk about floors. How do we care about hard floors? Now generally you know uh, in uh, temperate climate and also in uh, the climate like Delhi you know we generally have hard floors. So hard floors may be made up of stones, tiles, terrazzo, concrete, thermoplastics, rubber and asphalt. Now there could be many more types of uh, hard floorings but these are some of them which are commonly used. Thermoplastics as all of us understand are the plastics which are being used. Uh, the hard floors uh, which are generally uh, used uh, in interiors are the marble floors, the granite, mosaic and cement. How do we maintain the hard floors? Now we have to see, sweep the floor daily using a broom. We also should mop the floor using a detergent, water and a disinfectant. Disinfectant is very important because only then your floors will be very clean and children can also be left on the floor because generally they like to lick the floor also you know while playing with it and uh, pick up things. So we must use a uh, disinfectant and also we have to polish the floors using a suitable method. Now what is a suitable method for polishing of the floors? Uh, for polishing the floor you can either use a machine uh, and polish the floors or you can use scrubbers and then uh, using uh, uh, there are some polished powders which are available and then with uh, these uh, soft scrubbers you can just polish it onto the floor and then give it a fine polish with a soft cloth. So uh, polish can really brighten up the floor and uh, this actually should be done once in a year or so, so that your uh, floors are always shining. Whatever I have said till so far, 
I want now to summarize the hard floor, cleaning of hard floor material uh, using different materials uh, in a table. Now here we find that for hard flooring we are using stone or concrete, we are using asphalt, linoleum or linoleum, we are using terrazzo, we are using cement. Now for all of these materials the main cleaning method and the material which should be used is we have to scrub these floors using a detergent and warm water. Whereas for hardwoods we do not use detergent and warm water but rather we use a floor cleaner or a liquid wax and also we use uh, for daily cleaning a damp cloth uh, which is not wet. So damp cloth is it just has few drops of water which makes it slightly damp and then we just rub the floor using the uh, uh, damp cloth. Now uh, we also find that we uh, layer our hard floors with some kind of soft floorings materials. Now soft flooring materials which are generally used are coconut matting or they could be carpets and rugs. Now how do we clean uh, these soft uh, floor materials? So for both of these we must use a suction cleaner. Suction cleaner is could be a vacuum cleaner can be used and uh, uh, for uh, carpets and rugs we can use the shampoo, we can shampoo our carpets. And uh, we can also dust them every three months, but shampoo can be done once in a year or so. Uh, in commercial places, it could be done more frequently depending on the usage. Uh, for coconut matting, we can use warm soapy water and uh, for washing and uh, we can also uh, scrub it uh, with a brush. And we must, if we are washing the coconut matting, we should dry it immediately. Otherwise, it will become very soggy and soft. So in order to prevent it from getting soft, we must dry immediately. Now we come on to glass. Now glass is an another non-metal material which is used often in the interiors for windows, for uh, tabletops, for partitions, for sliding doors, for shelves and also so many other kind of accessories for which we use glass. Now how do we take care of glass? Now for glass again we have to use it, uh, we have to clean it every day dust with a dry cloth. We should also rub with methylated spirit using a rag and powdered whiting or commercial glass cleaner. We can also finish uh, with a clean soft cloth or newspaper or chamois leather and for shining the glass we can also rinse it with water mixed with vinegar. Now if we uh, clean glass with uh, water mixed with vinegar, it really shines very well and you really get that kind of transparent look on the glass. While cleaning the glass, we have to take some precautions. Uh, we must avoid use of hard scrubbers and abrasives to prevent scratches because uh, glass has a hard surface. And it, if it gets scratched, the scratches can never be removed, you know, then you have to change the glass. So we have to be careful that uh, in order to maintain the transparent look of the glass, it should not have any kind of scratches. Now we come on to another material which is also a non-metal material which is plastic. Now plastic we know this is modern age and uh, nowadays plastic is rarely used in interiors. So we use plastics for bottles, mugs, buckets, furniture, doors and counters and most of the time we find plastic also has a problem of it gets scratched or uh, it loses its shine as you know it ages. So we have to be very careful in using the plastic and cleaning the plastic in the right method so that it retains its uh, shine, its look as if it was fresh. So uh, how do we clean the plastics? We remove stubborn stains by using kerosene oil and later polishing it with mustard oil for shine. This really helps, you know, if you use kerosene oil, uh, first you remove the stubborn stains and then just polish it with mustard oil. So mustard oil brings back the shine on plastic. And we must also use, avoid the use of abrasives and chlorine to prevent scratches. Now we talk about 
metals. So, we all this while we have been talking about non-metals, now we are going to talk about metals. Now, metals definitely are very important because they are very strong, but with metals the problem is most of the metal they do get tarnished and they lose their luster you know as they age. So, how do we maintain the uh, metals which are used in interior surfaces? So, first let us talk about brass. You know, uh, brass all of us know does have a problem of tarnish. So, how do we clean it regularly so that it does not tarnish, it does not lo loses its luster. So, uh, we have to clean and rub it with sand and brick powder. We after doing that we have to rub it very nicely, you know, because if you rub with sand and brick powder then definitely uh, all the uh, marks on the brass will be removed and after that you know it is very effective you can try this method you rub you mix lemon or tamarind or salt with vinegar and when you mix up these three things and you just apply a layer on the brass metal and leave it for 15 minutes to half an hour and you will find that your brass really has a new look it is very effective so you can try this and after that uh, you wash it with water and then you have to clean and polish the surface with a dry and soft cloth. Generally you know people do use brasso and such kind of uh, polishes, but the only problem with brasso is that it tarnishes more and also brass has a different color and uh, brasso may not be used for uh, utensils which are used for dining, you know. So you uh, can use it for artifacts etc. So it is always better to use. Uh, the method uh, mixing lemon and vinegar together in equal proportions and just apply for 15 minutes to half an hour. Now similar to uh, brass we have copper you know all of us know that uh, brass also has an element of copper in it and similarly uh, copper is something you know which tarnishes very very fast. So, copper uh, loses its luster in no time, you know within a week you will find oh god you know this was not the bra uh, copper which I bought. So, we must wash it with warm and soapy water every day and then we have to clean the tarnish with salt, vinegar and lemon and allow to stand for 15 minutes. Similarly as we have done for brass, similarly we have to do it with copper and then you rinse well with water and then buff it with a soft cloth because buffing with soft cloth really helps uh, in maintaining the look. Now let us talk about uh, gold, how do we maintain gold? Now all of us know gold is a precious metal and uh, ladies really like to wear gold jewellery, but then how to ensure that gold is shining and it has its luster. So what do we do? We have to mix 1 teaspoon of ash or baking soda all of us have baking soda at home with enough water to form a paste. So we make a paste of baking soda with water, rub it onto the surface of the gold uh, with a soft cloth because do not use uh, a harsh or a rough cloth because that will also leave marks and gold is a very soft metal all of us should know. So because gold being a soft uh, metal we must be very gentle with it. So, rinse well with water and buff it with a soft cloth. So, after you have uh, washed it with water you, water, you have to keep on rubbing it with soft cloth because that also helps to improve its look. Now, we are going to talk about silver. Silver is another precious metal and we do have lot of silver uh, utensils at home, artifacts at home. So, how do we maintain uh, the silver ware that we have at home? So, we have to wash them with hot soapy water and ammonia. Now, ammonia really helps because that also removes the tarnish and then you have to wipe it immediately. Now, like I told you for uh, brass and copper, if you also apply to silver also lemon and vinegar and just apply, leave it for 15 minutes only and wash it and then you have, you can polish it with a soft cloth, it will also regain its luster. For silver one more thing I would like to tell you, if you immerse silverware with equal 1 teaspoon of salt and 1 teaspoon of baking soda, 
and uh, you boil silverware in that for 15 minutes. Uh, all the tarnish on the silver will get removed by itself. Now aluminum uh, definitely uh, is uh, a very, very hardy material and so much of development has taken place that nowadays we have anodized aluminum which definitely uh, maintains its shine but then the, uh, there are aluminum which are otherwise which are not anodized. So they really need to be taken care of otherwise aluminum has a problem of pitting, it gets small holes and in which a lot of dirt gets settled. So for cleaning aluminum you have to clean and rub it with fine sand and mild soap and you have to rinse it with water and wipe it. Apply vinegar and leave for 15 minutes. Rinse and polish with soft cloth. So vinegar is definitely very, very handy for uh, regaining the look of uh, most of the metals which we should keep with us. Now we come on to maintenance of iron. Now iron definitely we do have iron you know uh, in the form of steel and also iron as such. So you have to we have to scrub with 3 to teaspoons, tablespoons of baking soda, any abrasive or we can take like brick powder or a and a glass of warm water. So we, we have to keep on scrubbing hard for some time because at least spend 5 to 10 minutes on that and scrub it hard so that it gets cleaned well and then season with pure mustard oil at low setting on stove for 30 minutes after cleaning with warm soapy water. So uh, oil is actually like a seasoning applied onto the uh, um, iron and it also prevents rusting of iron and all of us know if iron rusts then part of the metal is getting removed. So we have to ensure that iron does not rust and we restore the metal to its original quality. And then we can wipe it with a soft cloth, avoid any det uh, synthetic detergents because they, they may remove seasoning of uh, iron. Now we talk about stainless steel. Stainless steel is one of the best materials you know which is very very easy to maintain. It is a very inert material. When I say inert, by inert I mean you scratch it, you do anything and it will regain its shine and look as if it was always new. And we have different qualities of stainless steel available and it can withstand all kinds of cleaners due to high stability. So you can use any kind of cleaner and stainless steel is quite safe. So uh, stainless steel even if you just uh, clean it with warm soapy water and just clean it with a soft cloth, it shines. So uh, till so far we have talked about the metals which are used in the household for uh, various purposes and how do we maintain them, metals and non-metals, how do we maintain them so that they, their original look can be retained. So now we, we are going to talk about the later part in another session. Thanks.